first term here, your first term has a fancy form of 1 in it, so that's sine x. Your second term is cosine square x in the numerator over sine x in the denominator. Maybe you start saying, oh, my God, I'm not, I'm not getting anywhere where I'm supposed to be. So let me just try to explain a little bit about why I chose the identities I chose to demo versus just giving them all to you is sometimes one of the places that students get stuck the most in identities is not knowing the trig substitutions, but it's the algebra. So I'm trying to pick some stuff where you have to use some like algebra to get through to the end, some where we're using some substitutions that may not be familiar to you. So each one is chosen for a particular reason. All right, what should you do now? You know you want to get 1 over sine x. That's your goal. You see a sine x in the bottom. Peter, what are you going to do? Yeah. Notice we have one baby term over here. We've got two terms here. So let's squish them together. And you do that by creating a common denominator by multiplying top and bottom of that by sine x, which will give you sine square x on the top, sine x on the bottom. Now you have two fractions with the same denominator, so you combine them, keep the denominator the same, and voila, what do you have on top? 1, sine square plus cosine square, right? Sine square x plus cosine square x. That reduces to 1 over sine x. Yay, happy face, which is cosecant of x. QED. You are done. So really, other than your basic ratios that you needed to recognize at the beginning, and you shouldn't even have to think about sine square x plus cosine square x, the Pythagorean theorem, it was just really algebra in this one. Any questions on this? Is everybody done writing? I don't want to move on unless people are done. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Well, baby, where do we start here? Well, this might be one where you have to work both sides. I don't know until I get going. So I just put my red line down like that because I know I can't ever cross the equal sign here. And you see you're going to use your uh, difference of angles formula for cosine. This is just a multiplication. Uh, maybe if you expand this out a little bit, it might help you here. Yeah, and you, if you can try to see this as just playing with it and take the pressure off of you about grades, you might relax into this a little more. So just for the sake of, sake of it, I'm just going to start the right side and just take those tangents and write them as the equivalent cosines sine over cosines, right? So tangent of alpha is sine alpha over cosine alpha. Tangent of beta is sine beta over cosine. They're multiplied, so I get one big fraction there. Now, the reason I'm suggesting this is because hopefully by now when you see something like this in the numerator, you, you may be thinking about the double angle formula for cosine, I mean for sine, and here you might be thinking about the double angle formula for cosine, at least part of it, right? It's not the whole thing. It's part of it. So maybe somewhere over here we're going to be able to simplify this fraction so it looks like that. All right, so let's start working the left-hand side. So cosine of alpha, take away beta. We take the cosine of each angle. Our sign changes, our operation changes from subtraction to addition, and then it's sign turn, signs turn with each angle. Okay. Then on the bottom, I just have cosine of alpha times cosine of beta. So all I did was use my difference of angles formula in the numerator. 
And that's why taking the right side and expanding it out a little bit is helping me hopefully see the direction to go in from here. So let me just say that when I was doing uh, our drawing courses in the art department for like three semesters, I took drawing. Actually, the first semester I was in developmental drawing, but they don't have a course called developmental drawing. So I took that twice. The teacher would always say, Linda, stand back. Move back from your easel and take a look at it. And that's a little bit of what you have to do here. You just got to stand back a little bit and take a look at it. Maybe play some music, you know, take a munchie or something, you know. So you have to, like, you. hopefully you can see this and this look just like that. Yeah? You see that? And this is a single fraction, whereas this is the sum. Can you see a 1 here anywhere? Yeah. But you can't go like that, which is big no-no. You can't cancel terms, because then you'd be left with that. This denominator belongs to both of them. So if you separate this back out into the two fractions it came from, you're done. So this is cosine alpha times cosine theta over that denominator, cosine alpha times cosine theta, plus your next term has that same exact denominator, sine alpha, sine theta over cosine alpha times cosine theta. So I'm trying to address some typical misconceptions that are algebraic here. That first term now, you have two separate fractions is 1. The second one is sine alpha times sine beta over cosine alpha times cosine beta. They are equal, and you are a happy camper. Okay. Q, E, D. So I'm trying to show you some like little those little things that come from doing lots of these, the experience, the being able to recognize certain things you may not have recognized. That was the whole key for doing these four. Any questions so far before we move along? So what do you think we're gonna? Is there anything to do with the left side? Maybe make it sine theta over cosine theta. That's, you know, not going to bring us too much illumination. I mean, if you want, you could write it as it's not much to go on there. I'm just going to start working with the right side because there's a lot to do on the right side. We have to use all our double angle formulas on the right side. So let's, oh no, the cosine one. Which one am I going to use? Oh. Oh, I'm not going to like, um, I don't want to steal the glory right away. I want, to, I want you to see how if you choose one that doesn't work, well, you try another one. We've got three different formulas for the cosine of 2 theta. You've got the cosine of theta, cosine squared of theta minus sine squared of theta. Well, that has a sine in it. Maybe I should use that one. Because you have a sign in the bottom, maybe I should use the one with the sine square in it. But you also have 1 minus 2 sine square theta. You got cosine square theta, 2 sub cosine square theta minus, which one do you use? You don't know. And it's okay that you don't know. I don't know, maybe you want to start with your favorite and see if you go anywhere. Anybody got a suggestion? Have you already done it? Oh. Okay, so you said 1 minus 2 sine square theta. Why'd you pick that one, Hunter? You get sine on top and bottom and no cosine, right? Okay, notice you have sine in the numerator, there, no cosine. And now we have sine of 2 theta in the bottom. So you want to write that. Okay, which one do you choose here? Hmm. It's only one. Yay! Sine of theta, two, cos two sine of theta, cosine of theta. All right. 
Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting really excited because I see sine in the top. I see a cosine in the bottom. I just got to get rid of one of the signs. So I'm just going to simplify my numerator. I'm going to distribute that negative sign through. So I have 1 minus 1 plus 2 sine square of theta over 2 times the sine of theta times the cosine of theta. One take away one is zero. Two over two is one. <gasps> sine squared theta over sine theta. Sine theta over cosine theta. And thus you are done. That's it. That equals tangent theta. You go you should always go back to your original. So what may have started out looking like a long journey wasn't that bad at all. And if you chose one of the other ones, you would see quite quickly that mm, you weren't getting to where you wanted to get, so you would just choose one of the other um, forms of cosine of 2 theta. All right? Starting to feel like doable? Talk to me. Yep. Nope. Better than where you were before? Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully today you'll leave here and you'll say, give me those identities. Just give them to me on that test. I can tackle any one. All right. Now let's see. Oh, boy, where are we going to start here? Well, we don't have anything for cosine squared theta. We could write it as cosine times cosine and maybe factor something out there, but... It looks like there's a lot to do on this side. I'm just going to leave the left side as it is and play with the right side. So big long red line down there. All right. So first, uh, in, the numer in the numerator, I'm going to change um, cotangent theta to cosine theta over sine theta. And the bottom is 1 over sine theta. That's my first thing I'm going to do. Then I might as well use my distributive property. Cosine of theta plus cosine squared theta. Ooh, I see a cosine squared. Yay. Over sine theta. Keeping in mind this left side over here over 1 over sine theta. And if you didn't know how to divide by fractions before you walked in here, you will by the time you get through with identities. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by sine theta. Why? Because sine theta is the reciprocal of 1 over sine theta. So I'm going to multiply the first term in the numerator by sine theta. The second term in the numerator by sine theta. And then if I multiply the bottom by sine theta, what do I get? One. All right, so on top I get, get the cosine of theta times the sine of theta. I'm getting really hopeful. The sine of theta is cancel plus cosine square of theta. Boy, I'm just a big, happy pre-calculus student, because I'm done. The rest of the hour is yours. I've given you seven or eight. And if you finish those off, uh, I can call up the homework so you can start the three in the homework. Any questions are welcome. I would strongly urge you, instead of asking me if someone at your table or another table is working on one, Get up to the boards and just start playing. You know, I know how to do these, but it's really important that you spend the time doing them. Of course, if you're really stuck, I will help you. All right? But use each other as resources and use those boards. That's why we have boards all the way around the classroom, was just for you to work together. And it's 